Stage two of the Tour Down Under takes the rise 150 kilometres in Adelaide Hills, starting in Prospect and finishing in Stirling. Everyone's expecting another group of around 60 or 70 riders to contest the finish, but there'll be one less rider taking the start here today. David Tanner of Team Belkin crashing yesterday, and we caught up with his director, Eric Decker. Well, still in Australia, he's in the hospital, and we'll arrive in the hotel to, uh, today. Uh, I don't know if he's, if he's going home. Uh, I think he stays here for, for a few days to recover, but he had an operation yesterday last night and the right collarbone was uh, was broken and they fixed it again we still have like G and Richie up there hopefully for the for the overall like Garrett's gonna be really hard to beat he showed yesterday he's really really strong but um, we're still optimistic that we can try something over the next few days especially on uh, corkscrew and Wollonga maybe try something there uh, so how do you see today's stage going it's talk of it being a reasonably small group again not a complete bunch sprint yeah, I think it's going to be pretty tough today. Uh, it's pretty much all uphill the whole day, so uh, yeah, it'll be tough again. And I think it will be a stage that suits Gero again, so yeah, we'll see what happens in the finish. The bunch set off from Prospect in front of huge crowds, all keen to get a glimpse of Simon Gerrans in his leader's jersey. Once again, it wasn't long before the breakaway of the day formed, containing some familiar-looking jerseys. Will Clark of Drapak had made it again, although the UniSA rider this time was Campbell Flakemore, and they were joined by Boy Van Poppel of Trek Factory Racing. The trio were kept on a short leash in the early stages by the Orica team, setting the pace for their race leader. At the first KOM of the day on Golden Grove, they held a two and a half minute advantage, with Clark first across the line, followed by Flakemore and Van Poppel. On the second KOM up Checker Hill, Clark had to come from behind after a slight hesitation, but just managed to pip Flakemore on the line, doing enough to put him level on points with Adam Hansen in the Skoda King of the Mountains competition. Coming into the finishing circuits around Stirling, Lotto Bellisol were aiding Orica with the chase of the leaders, and on the undulating circuit it wasn't long before young Flakemore began to pay for the efforts of his day, leaving two in front as he was swallowed up by the bunch. Well the peloton are just coming underneath the finish line to start the last of the 21 kilometre laps. The two people remaining about the front are just about to get caught and it's Orica Greenedge who are still controlling things in the peloton. They've got three guys who could potentially win this stage in the form of Matt Goss, Michael Matthews who's actually won here before and of course Simon Gerrans and from what we've been hearing from the other teams we think they're going to be working for Gerrans in order to pick up more time bonuses which could be critical for the GC and if he does manage to take another win there's going to be a lot of very happy spectators here. As soon as they were caught, Philip Dagnan of Team Sky made a counter-attack, whilst behind, one of the favourites for the stage, Andre Greipel, was forced to change his wheel after a puncture. Coming into the last part of the race, a crash held up a number of the favourites for the stage and GC contenders, but up front, Darrell Impey was making another perfect lead-out for Simon Gerrans. It was looking like a repeat win for the Aussie champion, but Lampre's Diego Ulissi caught everyone by surprise, surging from behind with enough speed to take him all the way to the line winning the stage in what is his first participation at the race. Already fourth on stage one, Ulissi is fast looking like Gerrans' most serious threat to the overall title. Deliberate loss by Gerrans, so he doesn't seem so greedy? Oh, I don't think so. No, we, we missed uh, Michael Matthews, got caught up in that crash, and uh, unfortunately we needed him with that turn I did on the front. I, uh, that was we needed bling to do that and by the time I got there I'd already done a bit too much work and I didn't drop them off quite quick enough which meant that Daryl hit the front a bit early and uh, Ulysses got the better run than Gero so that was kind of unfortunate but yeah you can't, yesterday we absolutely nailed it you can't get it right every time so second's still pretty good. Bit of a dig towards the end pre-planned or spur of the moment? Uh, pre-planned in the last bit of the race maybe but kind of spur of the moment I guess as well just um, you know, we knew Richie and G were going strong and trying to get them the stage wins, so there's a few sprinters left and Garmin were trying to line it up, so it was just to try and break everyone up, really. I wasn't particularly going for the stage myself. It was just to try and spice things up and give them a bit of a launching pad when it starts kicking up a bit, so, yeah. It was a steady, hard piece, but steady. Um, did it did it pretty good there. I just don't have it really to go on top of it, you know. I, it crossed my mind a few times, so this would be the moment actually you should go. But then my buddy went, what the heck are you thinking? No, not today, so. We head out on a ride each day. It is worthwhile giving your bike a quick check over just to make sure that everything's in good working order. So if you're a relative newbie to the sport, here's GCN's guide on what to look 